to the journey of an awakening spirit with your host Kathleen Flanagan. The journey of an awakening spirit is about teaching you a variety of tools that you can use to step into your true self. It is about self-discovery, realizing you are not alone on your journey. We will open the phone lines, give readings, and talk about what our listeners want to know. So please welcome the host of the journey of an awakening spirit, Kathleen Flanagan. Welcome everyone. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we are on the journey of an awakening spirit. We are streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. And today I have Zach Liotis here, and we are going to talk about when spirit calls us to open vortexes and portals and the work that I did when I started the grid work almost 40 years ago. So this should be a very interesting chat today. But first, I am going to go ahead and open the show with a little bit of sound. Okay. So Zach, I understand that you are on your way to going to Nova Scotia because you've got a calling to be, um, to open some portals out there in Canada. So why don't we just talk a little bit about what that was like getting that message? Cause I know you were technically, we're going to try to leave today, but the show kind of interfered a little bit on that, unfortunately, but you know, it's all good. And it's what spirit wants us to do, I guess. Let's just dive right in, right, Kathleen? <laughs> I'm not going to waste any time because, you know, I have so much I could say about just the work that I've done in 2017 and all the years and the dreams, and we're going to hit all that. But I figured this should be fun to let you get this thing rocking and rolling for us. Yeah, and it's so funny because I was supposed to leave yesterday and then today and it's supposed to be tomorrow and i'm like am i ever gonna go like because i still got to have to check my car because i have to drive down there so this calling as i call it or we call it came to me probably about three four months ago and i think it was like me asking where should I go vacation? Like, I need to go on a vacation. I need to stamp on my passport. Like, I, and this is not even a stamp on my passport. That's the funny part. And I just kept on opening myself up. Where do you want me to go, God? Where do you want me to go? Where do you want me to go, God? What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go, God? And I just kept on saying it over and over. Where do you want me to go, God? Like, give me some ideas. I know I want to go all over the world, but where do I want to go? And every single person I met in the last three to four months, a lot of license plate all said, Halifax, <laughs> Halifax. And I've had people say to me, because there's Halifax is beautiful, it's big. And I heard people say to me, oh, I'm from Nova Scotia. I'm from Nova Scotia. And I'm like, okay, this is fantastic. <laughs> this is, I got it. I'm getting the message loud and clear. But why do you want me to go to Nova Scotia? Like, I was thinking Jamaica. I was thinking somewhere hot, Costa Rica, Europe, something like that. And it was like, no, you need to go open up a porthole there. And I was like, ooh, I haven't done this in a long time. And I asked, when was the last one? So last time I talked to you, I asked her, like, when was the last time I opened another portal? They said in, in Venice, California. And I'm like, I didn't do anything out there. And they said, yeah, you did. You slept exactly where we told you to sleep, <laughs> on the beach. <laughs> and I was like, that's opening up a porthole? And they're like, that's all we needed you to do. So, and I was like, okay, well, if that's all it takes, I could handle that because I get to go to Venice for like three months, but now I'm going to Halifax, good old Canada. We need it down here. I mean, the energy in Canada right now is like up and down and up and down and more down and up and everything. So in Halifax had, you know, the, the fires this, this year too. Right. 
So it was like, okay, so I'm going to Halifax, but where am I going to Halifax? And then I just kept on hearing Peggy's Cove, Peggy's Cove, Peggy's Cove. And I'm like, I don't know where Peggy's Cove is in Halifax. And then I met a girl and I'm like, oh, she goes, yeah, she goes, I'm going to Peggy's Cove. I go, okay, I got it. I'm getting the message. And still, I'm still asking this question. Like, what is it that you want me to do down there? And the answers don't come right away. Like this last question I asked, like, what is it that you want me to do down there? First, they were saying like, just start driving and we'll tell you along the way. And I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of those games. I'm not playing that game anymore. You really need to get clear with me. And they, and just, it was just yesterday or the day before, I guess, cause now I'm the procrastinating, I'm on a procrastinating mode right now. So I need to know what I want to do, like what I'm going to do down there. And I was like, you got to build a grid in Peggy's Cove. And that's why when you said grid, but I was like, yep, there's the, there's the response. It's going to be a grid. So I said, okay. And now I could see like the crystals that they want me to bring down everything. So this just came, but I just kept on asking more and more and more. And I haven't been on a godly assignment in so long. Like I've done a lot of assignments out in Costa Rica. I did assignments down in Dominican. I've done assignments in the U S but nothing in my own backyard. I'm sure I've done assignments, like unconsciously, you know, not knowing anything, but this one like is a drive to Halifax. Halifax, if you know anything about it, has the most amazing fish out there because they get it fresh in the morning. So I'm going to be eating some good, healthy food out there. And it's just so beautiful. Like the energy of uh, Nova Scotia, Halifax, I've never been to Peggy's Cove is incredible. So I'm curious to see when I get down there, how the energy is down there and, and what we're doing. So I'm called to be down there for about three to four days. And I just still don't know what I'm doing. I just know now I'm building a grid. And I see the crystals that I got to bring with me, but that's all I know. I don't know anything else. So it's, it's a matter of me saying, okay, I'm going to leave now and just get in the car and start driving. But you have to make sure that your car is in good condition to drive for, I think it's like 27 hours. Oh my God. Well, I just, I think that's exciting. And I, there's a part of me that's just like super jealous because I actually love doing that. And Years ago, when I was probably in my mid 20s, early 30s, I think it was somewhere in there, I actually had a dream of what this crystal grid looks like on our planet. I was like actually above the earth looking down and it was just magnificent to see this lines, but these weren't here yet, but it was letting me know that this is what you're going to be doing. You're going to start activating things, which I was doing a lot of activation at that time. And some of the things were what's so cool about when you're doing these activations, you don't know anything until you're ready, until it's you're there. And I had a friend of mine and she and I went on a Thelma and Louise. Okay. And we went out to, well, the first Thelma and Louise was actually, we just went into Vegas because she wanted to go there because her husband had passed away six months prior. So I did most of the driving, went out to Vegas, did our thing in Vegas, and then we went on an adventure. And at that adventure, we were all over Sedona. We were up in um, all over Arizona and Prescott. I had gone to visit an aunt in Prescott and she had finally understood why I was like the way I was because she says, your family's crazy. And it's like, well, I know I've been telling everybody that for years, but nobody believed me because it's like, they're so crazy. It's hard to believe that people are really that crazy, but they really are that crazy. So she was like, oh my God, no wonder you're like this crazy person. I'm like, yeah, I know, but I'm used to it now. But what was so cool about that was we ended up in Roswell. Um, and we went into the caves um, cause I had always wanted to go into these caves and oh my God, talk about the planet and sex. Oh, she is all, oh, I, I mean, all the stal stalactites and all this, they all look like penises. It was the funniest thing. Cause we were just having like all this fun in there and we are so far under the earth on top of it. And it was so cool and it was so neat. But it was just like, wow, look at all the sex she has around here. <laughs> That's all I could say. It was, I mean, it was like, because it was something that was so unique, but we were doing something there at the same time. And then we head over to Roswell and we go to the um, UFO museum. 
And in that museum, it was like, oh my God. I mean, it was so real. And there were things that would just spook me every now and then because the way they set this museum up was absolutely amazing. And yeah, there really was a cover up because there's so much evidence. But I guess kept thinking this, then we started driving and she's like seeing all these rainbows and all this stuff. And I'm like, well, I'm really mad because I want to see all this stuff and get all this, but I'm driving, right? So I can't, I have to pay attention to my driving. And she's telling me all this and I'm like, you know, you better do something. Cause I'm, you know, one of those. <laughs> and something told me to call the museum. So I call the museum because they said, well, I need to know where the actual crash site was because it wasn't where, I knew it wasn't where they said it was. And she's like, oh my God, I've been waiting to talk to you. And I'm like, what? Because I'm like thinking I'm a crazy person, right? Thinking here I am calling this person saying, I'm getting a message that you have to tell me where the crash site is. And I'm sitting here going, I'm a crazy person. And she's like, no, I'm waiting for it. And now the cell phone's going in and out, in and out. And she's like, they're listening, they're listening. And I'm like, oh my God, she's paranoid <laughs> on top of it. Yeah. But it was so funny yeah. because it was like, I, I mean, I'm like, like blown away at what's happening on this phone call and blown away that I'm trusting spirit to the degree that I trusted him. And I'm blown away that she actually was expecting my phone call on top of it. So she, in between all the static that we couldn't get through, she ended up telling me where this place was. And, you know, so we just kept going. It's like, this is where it used to be, you know, what the paper said it was, but it was really this really little tiny itty bitty town and we could feel it. And when I was with Dee and, and I didn't want to, and we were wandering and I just knew where we, when we hit it. And I just was like, no, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. I'm not. No, I went into some sort of weird denial about it. And then Dee's like, this is it. And it's like, damn, you knew that too, didn't you? And it was, you know, because now it's like, now what do we do? And we just got out and we just did whatever we were told to do at that point. Yeah. And what we realized what we were doing was we were actually shutting that one down. And so when, when portals like in Sedona, there's like all these thistle trees kind of thing in these vortexes because they're shut down. They are designed to shut down because they use their energy and it's time for them to heal. And so that's what we were doing in Roswell is we did the same thing. And it was so mind blowing to have that experience and knowing, so, I mean, I don't know if I could find the place again. And if I did, I'm sure it wouldn't look like what it did, but I took a lot of pictures that day of just what the area looked like, because I knew that I would never probably find this again. And then when I was in 2017, I was called to do it when we had that full solar eclipse that was in Nashville, Tennessee. And we got all these crystals from our spiritual group and we just went along the electrical grid and we were placing crystals. So we were like connecting like the Rocky Mountains to the heart in Tennessee, because that's like a big spiritual area. Went to the Athena Museum. We did, I mean, we did stuff and there's people everywhere. And we're doing all this spiritual stuff there, you know, like carrying some sort of ceremony. No, it's like nobody saw us. It was like nobody saw us. But the messages that came from that experience and then going to the park, and seeing like twins and all sorts of things that were going on. It was, it was magical. It was a magical experience, but you know, you don't know what to do other than you get this calling and, you know, we were having like all these really cool things happening in the cameras and, and birds and things were coming in and it, it was just amazing. Like the trip, it was like, it took us forever to get to Kansas because it was like almost every single point that we stopped we had to put a crystal down like we were healing colorado going into kansas and then we got a little bit more sporadic through the bible belt and then we went into arkansas and that was really magical going into arkansas and going to um the sulfurs and the crystal mines and everything else that were there as well so i mean we just had this really cool trip and then when we hit nashville we came not nashville um Graceland area, wherever Presley lived, there was the biggest blackest cloud that was over the um, bridge crossing into Tennessee, but it wasn't, it wasn't there. It was in the camera oh, and that was really weird, but we have to take a commercial break. So I'll get back on what we kind of think happened there in, in Tennessee. Exciting. 
<laughs> what if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back, everyone. This is Kathleen Flanagan with the journey of an awakening spirit. And we are our streaming on the bold, brave TV network. And I was just talking about when I entered into Tennessee and there was this black cloud that we only saw on the camera. Now there was a series of events that happened in Tennessee that, and I think that this dark cloud, I know this was a dark entity mass. I knew that it didn't attach to me, but I think it might've attached thinking about it now. I think it attached to my friend because this was our second Thelma and Louise trip. And, you know, there things were like, okay, but they were starting to go downhill really fast when we entered Tennessee. And then it plummeted in, because there was a bunch of us women that I had never met before that came from like various parts of, along the East Coast to do this spiritual work that we were called to do to open these portals and deal with what was ever happening at this particular portal vortex area during the eclipse. And the one thing that I noticed at that point was aside that I wanted to kill this woman um, because she was making me crazy. She was belittling me. She was shaming me. She was invalidating me on many, many levels learned later how everybody felt about her. But the point was, was that I'm thinking, how are all these amazingly strong dynamic women if we can't come together and work as a team together we're not how is this planet ever going to work together and that was the thing now not that any of us consciously did that but i was thinking that because i am athena and i knew exactly what was going on and i could see that and i could feel it and so I just said, well, just let it unfold naturally because I think we'll find our way. And I trusted that process and we did trust, I did trust. And it was one of the most amazing healings that each and every single one of us women had because I brought this amazing tool and, um, and I'll, I'll get it during the next commercial break. I'll get it so I can show everybody what this tool is, but the whole point of this tool was that it was something that was so powerful and i had to think that i deserved this tool because it wasn't cheap when i bought it and i knew i had the money so that wasn't the issue the issue was do i deserve it and am i worthy to deal with this tool because it is so amazing so and spirit said you need to bring this i'm like okay so i brought it and everybody's like ooh, ah, ooh ah. and everybody used it everybody played with it well they didn't really play with it they used it and everybody, and then the, at the end, it was like, you know, this kill, kick-ass tool that I had 
because it kicked your ass. I mean, it actually split a timeline for me when I was, it was my turn for the healing. Not that I was expecting that. It just seemed to happen. <laughs> Yeah. You know, sometimes it just kind of happens that it's like, okay, it's your turn. And it's like, and you don't even know it's your turn until you're in it. And they had put, pulled the tool out on me. And when they did, it was like, there was a split in timelines where I was in one timeline and this one. And if they weren't standing in a circle holding me up, I would have fallen flat on my ass because I, I literally fell back and they literally had to keep me from falling because this tool, but what the whole point of that was, was that we were cracking timelines. We are, we are hopping up between the third, we're going up into the fifth level of consciousness on this planet. So a lot of things are changing and shifting and we all had to bring in all of our goddess energy because this is about the goddess energy. And so you're up in Canada. So Canada is finally at this point where we're connecting Canada now. It's like we're starting to connect all of these different portals and vortexes. Like the grid is set up. Now we just need to get those activation points because I think once the rest of those activation points are, things are going to change. So I think that's what's really exciting because when you're going out there to do whatever, I can't wait to hear the results of, of that because things are going to shift for you. I mean, there's big shifts, there's big changes, there's huge healing for you aside from the planet. So I mean, any way I could support you, I would. I just, I just think this is so exciting and I'd love to be on that adventure with you because I know how much fun they are, especially because you're so in the moment. Well, we're going to, um, we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. I don't know why I think the energy is just a little much anymore because I seem to be having a lot more technical technical <laughs> difficulties. So the more I go into this spiritual woo-woo stuff, I think spirit, because I know they're here. I can feel them everywhere. I'm getting goosebumps. You know, it, it's just a lot of things. And I did some work for a friend of mine who passed away last night that I learned about this morning. That, um, so yeah, there, there's like a whole thing going on with that and how she died. And, um, and I took a few minute break before the show to just like help her go there and help her to release everything she had been holding on because I remembered our relationship and how it terminated. And even though we kind of stayed in touch, not really, even though we were best of friends and it was like, when I looked up, you know, her cause of death. It's like, yeah, she never did resolve this. She just carried it and stuffed it. And, and when we're activating grids and portals and vortexes, you can't hide anymore. That's the thing. We are bringing masses amounts of light to this planet. When we're bringing the masses amounts of light to the planet, that means whatever your crap is, it's coming to your face and you either deal with it or you will die. There is no in between anymore. And I think because, and she was only two and a half, three and a half years older than me. So, I mean, this is hitting home for me. Okay. I get that I'm at that place where people start dying, but it's like, she's still young. I still feel young. I don't care how old I am. I still feel 20. 
you know, so yeah. that's the other thing. That's another wake up call of the amount of light that we are bringing onto this planet that is on this planet, because there are so many other light workers out there doing the things that they, we need to do to help this planet heal and ascend. And so, I mean, kudos to you and, you know, God bless you that you take up this call and this mission. And I know you're that kind of person anyways, but you know, you always have the right to say no. And that's the thing. You didn't say no. But it's too much fun to say no. Like that's, that's like, this is a trip where you really go with trust, like in faith and belief. It's, you might have all of these, own, your own like issues going on, like what's going to happen. And then uh, you could drive yourself crazy. But really, I trust, believe and have faith that this journey is going to not only help raise the vibration of humanity, it's really going to help heal me at the same time too. Because when we do this work for others, we get gifted just as much or even more. So I'm excited. God knows exactly what I want. So I'm excited to see what happens after the activation happens. And as you were speaking earlier, and there is a lot of spirit, I just got back from the lake. So I was literally in the middle of the lake for the last hour, just floating in water. So there is a lot of energy. But when you're speaking earlier, I hear my higher self go, they don't call me a soul activator for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to go activate yeah. some souls. You know what I mean? Like I got to activate my soul first and foremost, because if I, and this is something I want to say to everyone that's listening or watching us on, on any channel is that we need to activate ourselves before these assignments even come to us. We need to get clear with the BS that is going on in our own mind. We have to have a clear pathway to understand, to listen, to observe, to trust, to be like, take a left, take that left. Even though you might not see what's on the other side of that left, like you need to have that full clarity within yourself to take that left. Cause then something inside of you could be funny going, no, go right, go right, go right, go right, go right. But the go right, go right. If it sounds that way, you're like, mm, that doesn't sound like the way God would present that to me. God's like more patiently take a left. He doesn't repeat himself, take a left, take a left. Take. That's just the whole other side that's trying to deter you from, from going down the path that you're supposed to go. So when we get on these missions, these God, I call them the godly missions. At the end of the day, I, I like to use the word God because when we say universe, we're calling everything in, in, in our way. So I like to call them a godly mission. So when we go on these godly missions, there's times I also have them fasting for these missions so that I could be really clear with, you know, I'm going right or left because sometimes I've held on to so much of my own crap and they're putting me on this mission because I have to clear my cup as I'm opening, opening this vortex or anything like that. So there's a lot of different things that happen to a lot of light workers or God workers that go out there when we do these and we do these and we love doing these because it's adventurous. We don't know what's going to be on this other side of this activation. We don't know what's going to come with us or how it's going to vibrate through us or who we're even going to meet like Kathleen calling a lady saying, Hey, where's this site? Right? So this is the thing. Like I hear the spirit speaking through me. There's a lot of people that are doing these things in order to wake up humanity. We don't speak about it. I've never spoke about opening vortexes. I've never spoke about going places to do any sort of grid work or healing into the land. Like, it's not something we speak about. It's just something that we do. And I find that the light workers that speak about it, it's like, hurrah, hurrah, let's give you a clap. But those that don't speak about it and just go and do it, we're on a different mission or on a different level, on a different frequency. And I'm getting goosebumps as I'm saying this. My whole body is, is boosted up because we need to get this work done. We don't need to speak about the work that we're doing. It's like when you give to humanity, when you're giving out of your heart, you don't have to post it all over social media. I'm, I'm giving away or this and that. You do it in silence. You do it in, in privacy with you and God and your angels and your higher consciousness. And this is something that I'm kind of struggling with because they want me to record some parts of this. And I'm like, you want me to record this? I'm not recording this. I'm too busy working this grid. And, and I'm thinking to myself, God, is this really you telling me to record this? Because you've never said this to me. So there's something now chippering in the back of my head saying you have to record it. I don't record when I'm on a mission. I'm just in the mission and that's it. So that really came really strong down to even say it because 
a lot of people think, oh, that's so cool. I want to do that. There's a lot more to just going and traveling and spending money that's going to come back to you. There's a lot more behind that than going and putting beautiful crystals and on a grid. And, you know, there's days where you maybe don't eat for two days because you have to fast. You can only drink water because you have to clear some. There's a dark entity in the area like Kathleen went through. So there's a lot of work that we've done in this lifetime and previous lifetimes to get us to where we are today. This yeah. isn't something like, oh, I just had a spiritual awakening, hip, hip, hooray, kumbaya, let's go, right? Positive vibes, doesn't work that way. I'm not, we're not about positive vibes. We're about working through the bullshit to become positive without thinking we're positive vibes. This is what these grids are all about. These grids are about God saying, step into your power right now. We need you. We don't need the fluffy you. We don't need the positive vibes <laughs> you. We don't care about that of you. We need the truth of you. We need the power in you. We need the voice in you. So when we get into these places and we do this work, it's, it's empowering. It's empowering in so many ways. There's times you might feel scared. Like I, I'm, I'm not scared, but I'm just like, okay, where are we going? Like I've been to Halifax, which is a great thing. I've never been to Peggy's Cove. I don't know what to expect, but at the end of the day, it's one of those things that we say, okay, this is not only a mission for myself, but this is a mission for everyone else too that's ready to awaken, ready to step into their truth, ready to let go of the bullshit they're holding on to. The I'm just doing this for my family. You need to do for you to give to your family. So we're on this mission, man. And that just came right through yep. me like torpedo. <laughs> Well, we're going to take a quick short break to hear a word from our sponsors. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away creating better health relationships careers and finances let shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness definitely something's happening uh like a, a flow inside you know it feels good whether in person or online shiraz provides personal coaching belief shifting visit shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, Hope, and Support for Caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Welcome back, everyone. This is Kathleen Flanagan with the Journey of an Awakening Spirit, and we are streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. Well, as you can see that Zach and I are both pretty passionate about this, and um, I definitely was one. Um, sorry, I got a cat just jumped on me. Um, I was always one that it was easier for me to work in the background and be unseen because I knew the work I was doing was so powerful. I didn't want somebody to stop me. So that was part of it. And then I get the calling of, well, you need to come out into the world. And it's like, what? I don't want to do that. It, no, 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 I'm not doing that. And of course, here I am coming out in the world because 
like what I needed to do, I did. And now it's like, let's bring this to the forefront. I mean, you can still do all of your stuff because I don't, I'm like you, I don't talk about my grids and the vortexes and all of this stuff that I've had a lot of experiences with. And yet for some reason it's time to start bringing it out. But here's that tool. Let's see if I can figure out if I can get it on the camera. There it is. Um, can you see it? Yes. So for anyone so that's So this is the male side of the camera. I mean, this is the male side. And then you've got the female side. I'm trying to get lined up on the camera. Describe it for those that are listening to us on and not watching. I know. I, <clears throat> well, it's a geometric where you've got a double, looks like a double helix star formation with a huge crystal, lots of copper. And then on the other side, it's double circles with crystals. And inside the rod is a lot of crystals. And this is a very powerful dynamic tool. So this, as far as I'm concerned, when you're using the male side with the point of the crystal, you're really piercing the energy and getting to the core of what's going on. And then when you soften it with the feminine energy to bring that love and light back in and that peace and tranquility, because you know we're, we're always safe to do this work. And sometimes you need these tools. And this tool was just kicking butt because during that process in Tennessee, the one thing that came up is that I was having a lot of problems with the woman I drove out with at that point. And, and I just had to go, I had to take a plane. I hadn't, didn't really have any money, but it was like, I have to take a plane. I cannot go back. Cause she's like, I want to go home. And she's like, oh no, we're going to go here. We're going to go here. We're going to go here. And I'm like, I am not doing any of that. And, you know, and it was like she was starting to take control because she had no control in this situation. And the whole point of that trip was for us women to come out through our voice. We needed to speak up. It's not what does spirit say? What does God say? It's what do I say? Because we had to bring in our own empowerment because women have been shut down for so long. And we are the powerhouses on this planet. We do create life. I mean, this is who we are. I mean, there's a reason why they're called goddesses. They bring life. I mean, look at nature. The females run the males. Look at the males dance to get the females attention. It's not the other way around. So why are we flipping what we're doing as spiritual beings? But the one thing that I didn't come to, cause I did, I did a lot of clearing. I found who I was. I just, I like owned so much of my voice at that point. And the one thing is that morning when I couldn't sleep that night and I woke up and I said, you know, there's one more thing I, I need to like get clear on. And that's like this abandonment issue. And the first thing she did when I said, I'm going to take a plane is like, she turned and said, you're abandoning me. Thank God I did the work because if I didn't do that work, I would have just succumbed to her her um, controlness. And I had to break free of that because we do get like that, especially when we, when we put images in our mind that people are stronger or no more than us when they don't, you know, we invalidate ourselves when we see people like us, so to speak. But I want to hear what you have to say, because, because you bring and trigger things into my consciousness or thinking or remembering something that happened that helps me to grow and heal and resolve more traumas and stuff in my life. And that's when I started realizing we're just cogs in the wheel and we all come together for whatever reason we come together. And sometimes it's just massive healing. Other times it's to do something massive, like get this grid connected so that this earth is ready to ascend because I don't want to be like, we missed the boat. We have already missed the boat once. I don't want to miss the boat a second time. So that's kind of where I'm at with this. So, I mean, I get right behind everything you're saying because that is the truth of it is we have to own who we are, our power, our voices, and step into the true magnificence of who we are. Well, it's almost like right now what I find is happening is not only about stepping in your truth of who you are, it's really about also receiving what you want. Right. So when you receive, when you've been putting it out there for so long and you've been talking about it and talking about it and you're getting frustrated with not having it yet, like, is it ever going to come? Is it ever going to come? I feel right now that God is just opening this path for all of us 
to say, okay, this is who I am and this is what I'm going to have. This is everything that is mine. This is all that I'm going to take with me, right? So that is, that is the most important thing when we realize that we are worthy and we don't settle for mediocrity. And I feel like I said this even on the last, last month's show, like about settling for mediocrity. It's like, when we know and we own who we are because we see our self-worth and we let go of the baggage and the, the traumas and everything that was literally imprinted in us from not only this lifetime but lives from the past that we've carried on this is the time that i feel it's like we got to get rid of this for good now like this is that last chapter yep. of our emotional stuff because in the last five months i've been working on emotional intelligence huh? and spiritual intelligence so I've been working about emotional and spiritual intelligence for the last five months with spirit. It's really about getting your emotions. Don't allow your emotions to get the best of you. You run your emotions. Your emotions don't run you. So if you're depressed, and I could say this because I've been depressed. My 40s was, I say to everyone, I wanted to do this in my 40s, but I ended up in the wheel of depression, right? But I allowed that emotion of depression to take a hold of me rather than say, you know what, uh-uh, homie, not think. This is not happening. So if I had that emotional intelligence, because I had the spiritual intelligence, I just didn't have the emotional intelligence, I let my emotions run me, I would have been somewhere totally different. So right now, this whole big awakening is coming. It's like, Zach, we need to teach about emotional and spiritual intelligence. Because when we have control of our emotions and we see the way that we are being guided, because we've put it out there of what we want to bring, it's coming towards us, we're walking towards there. That's when we start achieving everything that we want to bring into our life. We let go of the baggage of the miserable marriages or the jobs or the lack mindset, the mental, like all the different mentalities, because you know, on an emotional level, you deserve the ultimate happiness in the world, right? And I have control of that because I have control of the way I want to run my life. And when I have control of the way I want to run my life, I give, I give space for God to help, to guide me, to co-create with me. But I got to get up every day, regardless of how I feel. And that's that emotional intelligence part, right? Like, I'm not going to let my emotions run me. I might sit in my emotions, excuse me, for a minute. I might sit in them and be like, why is this coming up? But I'm not going to allow it to take over. And this is, I think this is the, the energy that's been coming up and the energy that's coming up. I mean, we're in Mercury retrograde right now. There's a couple mm -hmm. of other uh, planets in retrograde. And this is really huge. This is literally like a kick in the backside to say wake up wake up and even when you look at the 3d world of everything that's happening if you fall for this next ah, wake up right so they're telling you to wake up spiritually in a different realm and emotionally in the 3d realm in the human world because that's where your emotions are being played with the most right and when your emotions are being played with the most in the 3D world, then we have a bigger problem. Because now they're they're not only taking control of your emotions, but they're taking control of your mind. And when yeah. people can control your mind, when you allow someone to control your mind, that's it, you're done. You are literally done. So this is the vortex that we're opening up in, in Halifax. It's really about harnessing your truth. It's about really moving forward. I see the crystals. I see already. I'm literally, I know you said you were over the crystals when you were, when they were showing to you. I'm watching from an angle at the crystals oh, and, all the, and, I, and I see how they want me to do it. And I see what crystals they want me to bring. And they, I see all this stuff. Does the grid stay there? I don't know. I might have to sit with the grid there for a while. I might bury the grid in that area. I don't know what's happening. All I know is I could see the grid and in that grid. I'm getting answers as to What's this grid supposed to bring? What's it going to create? What's all this? Like, because there were fires in, in that whole area too. I don't know how the energy worked out there. I mean, Canada's going on fire. The whole world's going on fire. Don't believe what they're saying. Emotional intelligence, right? Spiritual awakening. That's what it's really all about. And when you start seeing and understanding that and connecting to a higher vibrational frequency, those fires are going to be talking to you. Because I connected to the fires in Hawaii. And I was like, hmm interesting because everything is energy we have to remember that spirituality is energy and that's what they want to get they want you to spirit saying become emotionally clear and 
to intellectually clear with how energy works and use your emotional intelligence to walk the path. Do not allow people to trip up on you. Do not allow people to deter you because you know emotionally, intelligently that this is the energy that way it's guiding you. And you're worthy of everything. So don't let people pull you back, pull you back, pull you back. And, and the whole, it's all right now, even in the last, I would say in the last three, four years, I kept on hearing spirit telling me, you gotta help people with their, you gotta help people with their spiritual growth and to fully understand everything that they're saying, right? To teach them, to teach them. Because we're still, everyone's so stuck in the 3D world. Whereas all my life, I've been in la la land. And when I landed here in 2020, because I landed in 2020. At the end of 2019, I landed. I was like, okay, Mother Mary, I think you are right. They need me on the earth. And when I landed and it was 2020, I was like, take me back. Take me back. This is a crazy world. I like being in La La Land because La La Land, it might not make sense to a lot of people. However, it makes sense to me. And that's all that mattered to me. So it's yeah. it's one of those things that the grids are, I think, getting even more powerful and powerful and powerful because we have to warrior up now. We have to warrior up. We literally have to warrior up. And it's not like fighting warrior up. That's, I'm going to get that too. It's really energetically warrior up too. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a quick break um, to hear a word from our sponsors and we'll come back and wind up the show and see what Zach's going to be doing next. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back, everyone. This is Kathleen Flanagan with The Journey of an Awakening Spirit, and we are on the Bold Brave TV Network. And we are here today with Zach Liotis talking about portals and vortexes and grids and taking responsibility and owning who you are and all that good stuff. And the one thing that, I mean, I can identify with everything that you said about, you know, when I finally landed and how I wanted to go home because I've spent the last week just really deep diving into myself and looking at where am I, where do I want to go? What's my real message to the world? And and the only thing that I've known my whole life that I finally put into words is I'm here to teach you how to remember who you truly are. And that is all I have ever done. I have paid some dear prices with people who would be mad at me because it's like, just do it, you know? And then if it didn't work out the way they wanted it to work out, it's like, but at least you have an answer and you're not in this head trash anymore. And what, what are you doing? kind of crap. 
you know, because that's such a waste of time being in your own head about garbage that who cares, you know, does he like me? Does he not like me? Does she love me? Does she not love me? You know, it's like either accept it or move on because it's just such a waste of time. And, and, you know, and this, it was such a cool week because Sal was in Texas and Michael was in Montrose. So I didn't have any of my guys around this week. So it was just me and the cats. And it was just amazing to have this week. And, and I was sleeping really good. And Sal comes home yesterday and I'm like, why am I not sleeping tonight? And I think part of it was because my friend passed away last night and I might've picked up on that energetically. But, you know, the whole point is that I really truly believe this is our time. It's time to end the garbage. It's time to walk through your fear because what you want is on the other side of fear. And I can say that because my whole life I have pushed the envelope and scared myself to death on more times than I can tell, knowing I'm going to die. And yet here I am today, I'm still alive. Okay. So I'm not going to die. We just think we are because we don't fully understand our body, mind, spirit connection. And that's where I'm diving in right now is more about my mind connection, how my mind really works and how to tie that in with spirituality and move into that. And the one thing that I learned is that there's a core limiting belief that we are addicted to that I decided I'm taking this class because I talked about it last week. I took this class and I'm going to find out what it is because you can't just get rid of it yourself because it's an addiction. And so it's like, I think I know what that is and I'm going to be working on removing that because once you get rid of those limiting beliefs, and I know this because every time I got rid of some garbage belief I had, my life changed, my money changed, my love life changed, everything would change. So if I've got one big thing, because I've been sitting here and I, we talked about this last week, Zach, is that I'm right there. I'm like at the core of the onion is what it feels like, but I'm not sure what that is. And I think I found it because I spent so much time this week diving in. And, you know, that's not an easy thing to do. It's, you know, but it's what you have to do. If you want to have what's that life, you have to look at yourself and find out that you're not the lies that people perpetuated on you. We really are spiritual beings having a human experience. And that human experience is the emotions that we just let run rampant instead of owning them and controlling them because they don't have to run us. And when it comes up, then you reprogram it and say, and then what was cool about this one was I have a limit, limiting belief. And then it's like, okay, well, what's the positive to it? You say that. And then it's like, well, what evidence do you have? Because our mind only looks at the negative. I've had a whole lifetime of positiveness. And what do I focus on? The negative. Okay, we're stopping that one. So when you start training your mind, you start doing this and then you start coming more into who you are. And then that's how you're going to find what your purpose in life, because you have one. Every single one of us has a big purpose in life other than nine to five. Okay. That's my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But I think the thing is, and this is something that I kept on hearing in my life in the last 10 years is we have such a, a small imagination and it, we don't see us in this big space, like to think big, to be big, because it's like, well, I don't know if I could do that. Well, why, why wouldn't you be able to do that? And that's the thing. Like, we don't realize how vast God is. Like, even when you go outside, like I'd like driving North, I'm already somewhat in the country, but I like driving out in the country. And I just got back from the country. It's an hour. I drove an hour and a half because I love driving out there. I just think of the vastness of all the land, the green and all the houses are going to build on there eventually. But all that, like, I just think of how vast God is and all this that we have, but why can't we see this for ourselves? Why can't we have this vast vision of who we are? Why can't we accept it? And that's where I come down to self-worth. That's what it always comes down for me is like, you don't see yourself being worthy of the vastness of the blessings that are to come to us, right? Because we're so stuck 
in this money doesn't fall off trees. Life is expensive. You can't have that. You have to work hard. I was always, I always kept on telling myself, you need to work smart, not hard. That was something I've said to myself since I was a teenager, right? So when I look at that and I think of vastness, I have to bring myself into that teenager and think of work smart, not hard work smart, not hard, but live in this vast place and awareness that all you want is there. And when we look at it that way, like I was building a colon hydrotherapy clinic and I was like, who's going to build this? How am I going to get this? And my friend says to me, oh, I'm dating this carpenter. I'm like, perfect. Oh, I'm overdone. He built it. Oh, uh, I need this now. Oh, I don't know who's going to get that. Okay. I, I just put the call out and listen to the path. And when you put the call out and listen to the path, you could have anything but what i said previously if you are holding on to emotional spiritual debris garbage trash i'll just give it to you in all three degrees so it may click inside of your brain you are not aligning with what is guiding you or you're co-creating with and then you're wondering why your life sucks it's not that your life sucks is that you are creating a life that sucks so basically right now we're building these these beautiful vortexes to really get you out of that suckiness especially out of the whole mind you know depression is on a rise because they're making it go on a rise because man's yeah. giving their mind and their emotions to something they don't have control of so take what you have control of and go don't worry about what your government's doing with all the bs that they're trying to create that's not God's plan for you. God's plan to stay on that. That's what and, I'm going to end it on. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the perfect ending because <clears throat> it still comes down to your mindset. It always comes down to that. It's not our responsibility mm -hmm. to know how to work the curse and house. Mm -hmm. Our job is what do you want? And so I'm going to wish you an amazing trip. I hope you have safe journeys there and back and you have an amazing spirit out there in the center of that vortex that you're opening or the portal. And um, so I just want to say thank you everyone for watching. This is the journey of an awakening spirit. We are streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. I am Kathleen Flanagan, your host. And from my heart to yours, I hope you have a fabulous week. I'll see you next week. This has been the journey of an awakening spirit with your host, Kathleen Flanagan. Join Kathleen each week as she will inspire and empower all those who are drawn to her to live their highest vision in the context of love and joy. Right here Tuesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave TV Network.